according to Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with, uh, with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong, <coughs> the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, peace and joy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we pray that you open up our minds, open up our spirits, open up our lives to your true joy. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Each year, the theme for the third Sunday in the season of Advent is joy and rejoicing. So today is the third Sunday in the season of Advent, so our theme is joy and rejoicing. Very appropriate. So let's, uh, let's spend some time thinking about uh, where and how do we find and experience uh, true joy in our lives. I'm going to help guide you uh, through some reflections and, and then uh, hopefully that will, uh, will, will prompt you to reflect in your life and over the past week or two uh, to see where uh, God has brought joy and rejoicing to your life. And this may be something you want to talk about at lunch uh, with, uh, with family or friends, whoever you're sharing lunch with today, uh, this could be the topic for you. Uh, how have you experienced God's joy in your life over the last couple weeks? And where have you uh, found rejoicing? So, uh, so let's think about this. First, let's uh, find some guidance from our Bible readings. I think that's always a, a good place to start uh, with our, our Bible readings to guide us in, in reflecting. Uh, so, from our first reading from the prophet Zephaniah, uh, did you hear joy and rejoicing 
in Zephaniah. It can be hard to find. The book of Zephaniah is filled with a lot of uh, judgment, a lot of warning about wrath that is to come. Uh, but here in this third chapter, uh, we do find rejoicing. We do find joy because the people have listened. The people have uh, repented. They have turned to God. They have heeded uh, the warnings and have turned back to God to find their meaning for life, to find, find their life, to find their, their hope. They've turned away from other gods and from other destructive ways of life, and they've returned to God. And as they return to God, God rejoices over them. God even sings because God is so happy to have his people back. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful to imagine God so happy, so filled with joy that God sings over his people who have uh, come back to him. Some of you may uh, have in your, your mind a, a verse that we hear a uh, quote from Jesus. Jesus also tells how, uh, he says, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So as there is repentance, as we turn to God for life and hope and salvation, God rejoices all of heaven is filled with rejoicing because we have turned back to God. Isn't that great? We can bring God to uh, rejoicing and even singing over us. How has God rejoiced over you in the past, the past few weeks or over your lifetime? How, how have you uh, experienced or how can you think about now how God has rejoiced over you? How God is so pleased that God sings over you because you have turned to God and found your, your life in him. Let's also consider uh, Paul's reading to the, the Philippians. Uh, this letter has a lot of, uh, Paul writes a lot about rejoicing, rejoicing in God. That how our greatest joy, our greatest joy of all is in knowing our salvation in Jesus. That in Jesus, that in his life, his death, his resurrection, our salvation is full and complete. And in this, there is great rejoicing. Rejoicing that sees us through all of our struggles or trials. Remember, Paul was writing this in prison. As he's chained in prison, he's rejoicing in the goodness of God. Rejoicing in salvation of Jesus. This true joy sustains us and sees us through uh, whatever struggles we're facing. Paul talks in, in this section we had in our second reading about how uh, God cares about us and all that's going on in our lives and that we can bring everything to God in prayer. With prayer, with thanksgiving, we go to God with everything, knowing that God loves us and that uh, there's a peace, a peace of God uh, that Paul says, describes as a peace that surpasses all understanding. And this peace will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. That we're grounded in uh, the salvation of Jesus and this sustains us uh, sustains us in our life and gives us peace as well as an overflowing joy. Before we turn to our gospel reading, I think we need uh, kind of a lead in. Uh, John comes across pretty, pretty strong in our, our gospel reading today. And I think it's going to take a little bit of thinking for us to, to see this, this good news and to see joy in John's message. But it's there, and, and we'll get there. Uh, but he, he gets off to a rough start calling the people a brood of vipers. That, kind of, for me, was kind of a, a turnoff. I really didn't um, appreciate that. 
But um, journey with me here and we'll get to joy. Even joy from John. <laughs> I think to get there, let's um, spend some time thinking about our own lives. And where have we experienced God's true joy in our own lives and in the ministry we share together here at uh, Grace Lutheran Church and out into the community. So as I had some time to think about this, uh, one of the first things that came to my mind of where I experienced a true joy from God was uh, a couple Fridays ago when we hosted here the Thrive Clubhouse Christmas Party. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the Thrive Clubhouse Christmas Party, it's a, a wonderful event where uh, we decorate our stall hall, uh, beautiful place settings, Christmas decorations. Uh, it's a, a beautiful uh, sight to see and uh, a great uh, festival of, and feast. Uh, they prepare uh, turkey and ham and mashed potatoes and green beans and a variety of salads and tables full of incredible desserts. Now, that's joy. <laughs> But, but there's even a deeper joy than just all, these, all this wonderful food. And I found this, this deeper joy uh, that came in after the meal is when the Thrive Clubhouse members uh, lead us in the Christmas program. For those of you who don't know, Thrive Clubhouse is a, a place where, where people can go, uh, people who have concerns with mental health issues, where they can go for encouragement, support, where they go for uh, employment and training for jobs, a uh, place where they can fit in. Uh, so they, after this wonderful feast, they lead the Christmas program. Uh, they share with us poems they have written about Christmas. They sing songs about Christmas, some serious songs, some funny songs. And uh, they, tell, they tell from their heart, from their spirit, what Christmas means to them. And in this program, I found a, a real joy, real joy of God. And uh, I also thought it was a, uh, a wonderful way of, of showing ministry of this congregation that expresses uh, God's care and concern for all people. Uh, in this program, uh, we gave the opportunity for, for these people who are often uh, pushed to the side in society who gave them the opportunity to shine and to share. Uh, sharing from their heart what Christmas means to them. And I think uh, much of Jesus' ministry was about empowering the powerless and giving voice to the voiceless. At the Thrive Party, people who are often too often ignored or looked down on uh, were the stars of the show. Uh, they were shining with the light of Christ this event brought out the true joy of God through, through their lives. So a great experience for us uh, here at Grace. Then I uh, thought about this past Friday. I had the opportunity to be part of our preschool Christmas program. Uh, this event also brought joy. Children... Uh, are always so fun and funny and uh, unpredictable. <laughs> it's uh, sometimes hard for them to focus. Their minds are so active, learning and taking everything in. But our preschool children brought the good news of Jesus uh, through songs, through hymns that they had, had learned. They had memorized the hymns of our faith that tell uh, the good news of great joy, of how God has sent to us his son, uh, to, to live among us, uh, to be God with us, and to be Savior for us. I'm convinced the best way to learn a story is to tell it, or for our preschool children, uh, they learn the Christmas story as they, as they sang it to us. And then, uh, then after our, the Christmas program, the children went out caroling. They went to Spring Arbor. Uh, both Spring Arbor and Spring Arbor West, and there uh, they sang for the residents there, and I know you can imagine the joy that our little preschool children brought 
to the residents at, at Spring Arbor, uh, singing again the good news of great joy. In this, there is joy. Well, another experience of joy that I had uh, over the past week and a half, I've experienced joy in people caring for me and my family. Uh, many of you know my wife, Catherine, sprained both of her ankles. And uh, so we have learned the joy of receiving. <laughs> receiving food, receiving prayers, receiving genuine uh, loving care from our, our church family. Uh, so thank you for bringing joy to us, bringing loving care to us. And I think as people uh, cared for us, they also experienced joy in being able to, uh, to, to show uh, loving care to others. Uh, so it, it worked both ways. Uh, we learned the joy of receiving and, and others the joy of giving. And this is hard for us. You know, so often we all want to be independent. We want to be able to do everything our own. Uh, we don't need anybody else. <laughs> and then we're also uh, robbing people of joy, the opportunity to care and to bring uh, the loving, loving presence of God to a situation. So we learn the joy of letting people pray for us, letting people feed us, letting people love us more than what uh, we may have needed, uh, but what a joy it was to, uh, to share in that. Uh, and then think this also got me thinking about some other experiences of, of joy here at Grace. Uh, a few Satur Saturdays ago, there, this place was filled with joy. <laughs> Outside, we had crews of people raking leaves and blowing leaves. Inside, we had people uh, decorating, setting up the Christmas tree, putting the, the Christmas on the tree and the other greenery. We had our crew in the kitchen preparing a wonderful brunch for all of the workers. And I could sense in the faces of the workers a real joy of giving of themselves, caring for their church and caring for their church family. Uh, through this service, and that brings joy. Now, I think about the blood drive we had on Friday, uh, people who gave blood the, and the volunteers there. Uh, certainly not something that is a pleasant experience, but yet something that is worth doing, worth the discomfort you know, to help somebody who needs the blood. And there, I think, is joy. Another, uh, I could go on all day, but I'm just going to share one more. <laughs> Friday afternoon, uh, I was, was out uh, doing hospital visits and uh, to one of the rooms of one of our Grace members, the, the room just seemed to be filled with pain and sickness and confusion. And uh, our own Sally, Staten Knot, she, she came in and uh, for the patient and her family, Sally sang, sang a simple little song but this song brought soothing to the patient and comfort and loving care to the family and just set a whole new tone uh, for that, uh, in that hospital room. And in that I found joy. So once I started reviewing my week and all these events, uh, just one after another, I could recognize God's joy in these events. So I, I hope you'll take some time uh, today and share with others reflecting on how God has, has brought joy to your life, how you have brought joy to other people's lives, and how God is rejoicing over you, singing because of you. But a, a quote uh, that I want to share with you from Ron Rollheiser Rahl, uh, that says, Joy will come to us if we set about actively trying to create it for others. Joy will come to us if we set about actively trying to create it for others. As we're filled with the joy of God, filled with the joy we have in Jesus our Savior, and as we care for others, uh, they also receive this joy. And I think <laughs> this is where we get back to John the Baptist. I think John knew about this joy. 
and wanted others to know the joy of caring for other people. I think that's why he said, if you have uh, two coats, share one of them. If you have food, share your food. In this you will experience joy. In this you will experience uh, the goodness God has for, for all people. As well as John's strong message of repentance. Knowing that as we repent and as we turn to God, that God rejoices over us. God sings over us. So John is a, message, a messenger of joy. It takes a little bit to find it, but I think there it is. John, John wants us to repent, to find our life in God, and as he's preparing the way for Jesus. And in this, as we turn to God, God rejoices over us. And as we're filled with the joy of God and we share it with others, that joy spreads, uh, spreads around to others. Uh, so I think we can see John as an agent of joy, though it, it took some looking. So here's some questions to ponder. How is God rejoicing over you? How is God rejoicing over you? How are you finding your joy in God? And how are you creating joy for others? How is God rejoicing over you? How are you finding joy in God? And how are you creating joy for others? Uh, may this joy of God fill you, bless you, and flow from you. Amen.